Hi all, welcome to Anjan GCP Data Engineering. In this video, we are going to see how to automate snapshotting or backing up data of a specific Google Cloud projects, IAM roles or permissions. Okay. So in this video, we will see a uh, required Python APS which would help us to get this information from IAM uh, Python client libraries. Okay. And also, uh, we will use cloud function as our execution environment, which would help us to add snapshot time. Okay. And then we'll use BigQuery to store these snapshots okay, on a periodic basis. Okay. And also, we will see how we can use cloud scheduler to schedule this entire process. Okay. In one of our previous videos, we have explained a similar concept. Okay, this is the video. Okay. But here, it was more of change data capture. But here it is a snapshotting or taking complete backup of IAM roles at project level. Okay, I would strongly recommend you to go through this video. This this would definitely help you to understand what are the different ways we can uh, capture the changes. Okay, done to IAM roles and responsibility. Here we are going to see taking complete backup of your IAM roles or snapshotting of your IAM roles into a BigQuery table. Okay. Okay, if you go to our IAM console over here, here you can see what are the different roles and permissions granted to uh, individual users or groups or service accounts. Okay, now you wanted to take the backup of this entire information. Okay, then append the timestamp. Okay, you can take the snapshot based on your requirement, whether it can be a daily snapshot or weekly or monthly based on your requirement. Okay, so we'll use that related python api to get this information okay so then you will take the snapshot at different period of times based on day week or month okay and then using the python api we are going to write logic okay inside a cloud function so which would help us to get this information okay and then you will append the timestamp to each snapshot okay then you will write the data into bigquery okay we are going to use cloud scheduler to automate this entire process okay basically cloud scheduler would trigger our cloud function on periodic basis and schedule time okay so now we'll try to understand the code okay and also python apis involved in this implementation okay this is the code which we are going to use okay i've already written this code okay for our demo so these are the different python apis which we are going to use so this is the main api which would help us to get the iam roles at the project level okay so here we are going to import this particular library called discovery okay so this would take certain input arguments the important argument is cloud resource manager and always remember the one who is going to execute this code should have the required permission okay to use this api especially from the IAM point of view okay so we are going to use cloud resource manager okay in that case we need to have the related IAM permission so in our case cloud function is using default compute engine service account okay that service account should have the enough permission to execute this overall functionality okay I hope you understood okay then uh, by using a specific method called get IAM policy okay so this would take certain input arguments so here we want iam roles at the project level that's where we are passing project id as our input argument and also we want response in a json format okay so that's where you can even mention that format okay so you would get the response in json format okay then if required we will format it and also for every snapshot you will have to add the snapshot time that's where using our python logic we are deriving a snapshot in string format and then we are appending it in a loop for each row over here in a json file okay and then using our project id and also data set id and also table id so here we are passing all this information over here so when you are creating your cloud function you are going to define these variables as a environment variables there you are going to uh, provide this information project data set and table for example, tomorrow, if you want to use the same function for different project and different data set and if you want to store this information in different table, then you can just change this environment variable through your cloud function interface so that it can be reused. Okay. So then using this information, okay, we have the JSON data. 
you can insert that information into a BigQuery table using this method. Okay. So, here we have defined the BigQuery client. Okay. That is where you want this library as well. Okay. Google Cloud BigQuery. Okay. Let us go to the cloud function environment. Okay. Now, create function. So, if you are first time using this cloud function environment, uh, it may ask you to enable few APIs, right? So, uh, you can do that, okay, based on the instructions you get on the screen, okay. So, now let us give some name to it or function, okay. So, let us select the nearest region. So, using this HTTPS endpoint, we are going to trigger this function using our cloud scheduler, okay. So, this is that URL. Okay, now, you will have to define your environment variables for your project data set and BigQuery. So, here you have an option to add your environment variables. The first one as per our code is project. Okay. So, you will have to take the project name from here. This is the project. Add one more environment variable that is data set. So, I have already created this data set and table with required uh, schema in our BigQuery environment. Okay. So, this is that table you can see I am roles snapshot. So, it has the schema role and members okay, and also snapshot time. Okay. If you see the preview right now we do not have any data. So, through this function execution we are going to insert the data. Okay. And this is the data set GCP demos and this is the table name. Okay. So, we are going to copy the table name. This is our data set name and add one more variable table. This is the table name. Okay. Now, go to next now you will have to select your execution environment so we want python so right so here you can copy paste this code here we are pasting this code okay so now these are the dependencies to be installed you have to mention that Okay. Now, you can deploy this function. Okay. So, just deploy. So, it will take some time. We will have to wait until the time. Now, you can see our cloud function has been successfully deployed. So, let us go to logs. Okay. So, now you can see uh, it has been successfully deployed. So, now we will create a schedule through our cloud scheduler which would trigger this function. Okay. Let us go to cloud scheduler, okay, schedule a job. So, here you can give some name. Okay. So, you will have to select the region, select frequency as well, let it be, it is up to you based on your requirement, you will have to change this accordingly and then time zone, okay. click continue. So, here you will have to select the target type since we have created HTTPS function. So, you will have to get that URL. Okay. So, go to trigger section here you can find that URL information just copy this URL and come over here select the target type as HTTP you can paste that URL let the method be post okay. do not change anything it is okay. just click on create. Now, you can see our schedule has been created and it has been scheduled as per this frequency. Okay. Now, in order to test our function, you can even force on this schedule. So, I am just doing that. Okay. Go to your function logs. Now, you can see data has been loaded successfully that means, whatever the IAM roles 
we have over here should be captured into our table, BigQuery table. Now you can see your first snapshot from your IAM API. Now you can see this job is in success state. Now again we will try to re-trigger this job after you change some permissions, right? And now there is one observation, right? Now you can see there are some extra rules and permissions over here in the table. So there are some internal permission given to an specific service account, right? And Google Cloud also grants some access to a uh, few of its managed uh, service accounts. Okay, in that case, those details are not visible over here. Uh, but here in this table, right? Even you can see those details. Okay, and now what we will do? We'll try to add some new uh, user to our okay project and. We will see whether we have these details uh, over here or not when you take the next snapshot. Okay. Now you can see if you come to our users, especially uh, just focus on the user over here. This is my one more user. I am going to add a new user to our project. Okay. Just come over here and grant access. Okay. Okay, this is one more user. Just I am giving basic project viewer permission. Just save. Now, when you take the next snapshot, you should be able to see this user is getting added to that particular snapshot or backup. Okay, so now you go and run this job once again. Force run. Okay, uh, now go to our cloud function logs now here you can see one more log entry with data has been loaded successfully okay now if you go to your bigquery environment just refresh this table now you should see one more snapshot with different timestamp now you can see this user has been added to our snapshot okay now you can see there are two different snapshots okay this is 1214 okay now this is 1219 so this is how you can take the backup of your IAM roles and permissions into our Google Cloud BigQuery table and you can use it for your further analysis. Okay. Now if you see this table schema, see one of the field is repeated fields. Okay. That means it is a array, right? If you preview the data, uh, you would not be able to see if it is an array or a normal string. But if you just verify the schema, this is an array. If there are users like service accounts or individual users or groups have been given with the same permission you will you would see multiple entries over here in the form of array so in order to unless those columns so you will use a specific keyword in a bigquery we, we use a unless to uh, basically flatten out your array element so we are going to use this query so we can analyze your data so here we are trying to access since that is an array, we are trying to access array elements using index. We use this keyword called offset to access your array elements. And now you can see the more formatted information over here. Okay. Okay. For this user, we will see what are the entries we have. We should have only one entry. Okay. And now what we will do, we are going to change his permissions. And again, we are, we will see whether it is capturing the correct details or not. Go to our IM console. Now I will change this permission from viewer to editor. Let us say save. Now again run this job. Okay. Wait for some more time until this function gets executed. So now again it has been executed successfully. Go to your BigQuery. Uh, table and uh, you should see one more snapshot refresh okay now now we have one more snapshot with different timestamp now using this query we are going to see so what are the different permissions this user got over a period of time and see in our earlier timestamp this user has viewer permission now it got changed to editor okay so this is how it will help to analyze your data okay for different use cases so i hope this will help you that's it for this video we will meet in the next video thanks for watching